Hey everybody, this video is going to be about how to form a set of concrete stairs, but before we get right into it, I wanted to show you how we started this project and how we got to this point, so stay tuned. Hey guys, so we're getting ready to start a set of stairs in a wheelchair ramp for this, this building here, so right now we got the footing, just got the footing in today. We're going to do a little frost wall under this so the the frost doesn't move it at all. We live in a state, Maine, here where we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles in the winter. So we're down below the frost line with the footing. We're going to put a four foot frost wall on it and then we're going to build a set of stairs here and then a wheelchair ramp over there. So so here's this set of, set of stairs we got to set up. They got the frost walls all in. If you can remember we showed you the footings there before they poured the footing. So now they got the, the frost wall set on top of the footing. We got some piers here. That's where we're going to form up the set of stairs, so we'll walk upstairs here onto a, onto like a patio or platform and then they can walk into the building. Then over here is where the wheelchair ramp is. So we'll form up on both sides of this and pour a wheelchair ramp that's 26 feet. So we'll pitch that an inch per foot to make that to code. But first thing we got to do is get everything formed up and get a big mat of rebar in this thing. Right now they're still filling it up with gravel. They got to compact that, get it ready for us. And then we'll get over here and form it up. Hey everybody, so we're over here. We're going to form these stairs up. We got a we got a top landing there. We got a set of stairs and we got a wheelchair ramp. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start with the forming and I'm going to tap con some 2x10s right here around the perimeter especially i'm going to start with this top piece and that'll establish my height for me and then i can work on putting the the stairs down here i got a little bit of room to play with down here on the parking lot so the place to start is up top get that first landing that big landing done so my height is established there we're going to slope it just a little bit away from the building and then that'll also establish my grade to the top of the ramp and then I can get the ramp all formed up. But to start with, I'm gonna tap con, get, get my grades set, and then tap con some two by tens around here, right? And we'll set them right to grade to make it easy to straight edge and finish. All right, guys, so like I said, first thing I do is I establish my grade. The height of the floor going into the building is the, gonna be the grade of my landing, my concrete landing. So. I get my, my laser set to that, then I can use that to set these forms and I'm using 2x12s to go around the outside of the platform so I have plenty to, to drill and screw my tap cons into. The slab itself up top there is going to be about 6 inches thick. We're going to be putting some, some styrofoam under it. Actually it's 4 inches thick because it is 4 inches of concrete, 2 inches of styrofoam. So. That's why it looks like there's about six inches there right now. So like I said, the first thing I needed to do was get my my 2x12s here for my landing, my concrete platform up there, screwed in and right to grade. And then I can start working on the concrete stairs because, I mean, that's actually the grade of my top step. The next thing I did was I got my uprights screwed to the concrete. so. That way I can get my, my stairs all laid out. We're going to end up having, I think, four step ups off the parking lot here when they finish paving. So you can see I got my first board right there, which is going to end up being my first step. Now I'm laying out my, laying out my stairs right there. And we're having a, the risers like that I'm, I'm marking up are seven inches high. So we'll get a seven inch riser. And then a 12 inch run which I'm, I'm marking right there and my risers are going to slightly tip forward so they'll have a, a little bit of a slope on the risers it just makes it a little easier for for walking up the stairs if the risers have a little slope to them so I'm, I'm getting that all laid out and now what I'm doing is I'm cutting a 45 on my risers so when I go to pour the concrete it just makes it, it pouring a little bit easier and the video that shows us pouring the concrete I'll have at the end of this video so it'll come up if you want to watch see how we poured the concrete you'll be able to see that by clicking onto it at the end of the video 
the finishing part of the of the stairs where we you know we broom it we edge it we strip the forms we rub out the faces with a sponge and all that how we how we finish concrete stairs will be in my concrete underground training academy and that'll be in a link at in the description of the video so if if you want to learn how we finish these if you want the the more in-depth step-by-step tutorial on how we form port and finish concrete stairs that'll be inside the concrete underground guys and that link will be down below so I'm getting my getting my risers here screwed up where I need them and you can see you can see how I how I, I started at the bottom and each one goes up seven inches till I get to that top platform and that top board right there on the right is the same level as the top 2x12s I first tap condone. So the platform runs out into the stairs there, you know, about a full step width. Now what I'm doing is I'm cutting my, my styrofoam so it'll fit right inside and then I'll get that all fitted really nice. We use styrofoam here in Maine because it helps keep the frost from getting down into the into the gravel below and just keeps this thing from heaving. So <clears throat> we live in a state that has a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. I got a rebar plan to go by, so this was all drawn out for me. And the rebar's all been cut over there, so I just gotta figure out what goes where and get it all laid out. So like I said, the people I'm working for, you know, had this all all laid out and cut for me, all all uh, cut and bent for me. Then I all I so all I had to do is just lay it out and get it all tied together. Um, it wasn't my design, it wasn't my plan. You know, <clears throat> I'm just going by what they're telling me to do. It actually made it pretty easy. The guy that cut it out cut them all the size made it uh, made it pretty easy for me to do this so it didn't take me too long to get all this done tied together <clears throat> all I had to do was make sure that I had the right lengths in the right spaces some of them were pretty close in length I'm gonna use a, a, a what's called a yo-yo as a tool and some wire ties to tie all these together that a wire tie is just like a piece of wire with a couple loops on each end and I all I got to do is I just tie it around each one and use the yo-yo tool to spin it together to tighten it yeah you can see me using one right here so there's the little yo-yo tool and there's the wire tie That's it. That's as easy as it is to tie that rebar together. Now I'm just putting up the brace that's going to keep the forms from bowing when we pour the concrete. We're going to end up using a 4000 PSI concrete on this. With uh, It's also going to have microfiber mesh in it and air entrainment. The air entrainment is also to help with freeze and thaw cycles. Coming up, like I said at the end of the video, will be the video you can click on to see us how we poured these steps. So I'm just screwing in my braces. That's all going to help keep those those boards nice and straight when we go to pour it. And that's it. That's the finished forming job right there. So again, guys, come on back. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe now. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.